Hi there, you're listening to The Steve Schramm Show, where we train Christians to become confident, passionate servants of Jesus so they can grow in their walk with God and share their faith more persuasively. Welcome to the show. Well, on this week's episode, I thought I would kind of continue the kick I started last week and and, and spend a, a couple more weeks on young age creationism. And um, so this idea uh, this week I, I wanted to talk about is uh, the idea that flat earth claims and young earth claims claims are on equal footing and surely you've come across this uh boy i know i have it it, it's man it really frustrates me every time i see this um there's a gentleman who i mean he's a nice man he's a respectful guy he's on my facebook he's a christian he loves the lord we talk about uh things from time to time and yet yeah, this guy, he, he has made it kind of his, his mission. I mean, he's got a blog, um, and it is kind of this guy's mission to just destroy the claims of young earth creationists. I mean, that is just what he does. And, um, you know, I, I find it hard sometimes to... To, to deal with that kind of thing. Um, anyway, I, I, and, I, you know, I have that problem as it goes both ways. Um, I, I do think that there is room. If you disagree with a few, you know, then, okay, fine. Um, write your things about it. Create a blog uh, against it whatever. Uh, there are definitely people on all sides of this issue who do that. I tend to take a little bit more careful approach than that. Um, but anyway, uh, this guy doesn't. So he has a blog where he deals with um, young earth claims. One of the things that he's done recently, and I think it was in tandem with somebody else, is he has kind of parodied the work of uh, a creation scientist, Dr. Danny Faulkner, who he's a well, I mean, he's an accomplished astronomer. He has been teaching astronomy for much, much longer than I have even been alive. And he works at Answers in Genesis now, educating and teaching on um, astronomy from a creationist perspective. And uh, to read his work, I mean, he's a brilliant writer. He's an honest writer. He definitely admits when when, when the creationists don't have a good argument, um, he admits when when we do. He argues strongly when we do, and um, he always consults people. Uh, for instance, when he writes on things that deal with concepts that lie beyond his expertise in biblical Hebrew or such like that, he always brings in people who are experts in the subject to bolster that. So I mean, he doesn't make claims beyond that which he has the uh, ability to. I mean, nobody's perfect, but I'd like to vouch for his character a little bit here. Um, you know, I think he's well argued guy and um you know he should be he should be admonished for um the work that he's done he should be lifted up for that so i I want to to state that up front very clearly well he's recently started to deal with some of the claims that flat earth believers tend to make he's gone now for three years i believe to the flat earth conference and the the big uh, the big flat earth conference that they have every year i think it's in the uh, durham area here in north carolina um, at least it was last year i don't know where it was this year uh, if they moved or not but um he's attended that for three years in a row he's you know kind of become a staple the first year he went he was kind of covert um since then he has been a little bit less covert and, and people are kind of aware of who he is why he's there and um, it's kind of twofold I mean he definitely wants to learn more about them he wants to take them seriously because they are a growing movement we don't just want to dismiss them everybody deserves to have their arguments heard okay this is a big uh, a big thing we don't silence people in virtue of the fact that they hold a particular view because other people have said things about it or 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 supposedly refuted it or whatever Um, we want to be careful not to make this an ad hominem enterprise. We want to engage with arguments that people make. And so that's what Danny is trying to do. Um, He's recently written a book about it and recently written some papers about the issue and also recently written some blog posts about it. And so this is what I want to, to harp on for a moment. There have been some parodies posted on the blog that I mentioned at the outset of his Uh, his writing that are made to substitute anywhere that the Bible or excuse me, anywhere that the blog post says flat earth, it substitutes young earth as kind of a a parody and says, basically the point is to show that young earth claims are on equal footing with 
flat earth claims. You could just insert the words young earth anywhere that it says flat earth and um, that that shows that his view gets destroyed just as easily as the flat earth view does. It's kind of like a, 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 um, a comical reductio ad absurdum or, or something of that nature. Okay. Reducing uh, a, a comical effort to reduce Faulkner's own argument to absurdity by showing that his view crumbles under the weight of the demands that he places on the flat earth view, if you're tracking with me. Okay, now, um, it, it's funny, okay, it has rhetorical effect and all of that, but there are problems with doing this. There are problems with doing this, okay? It's, it, it's logically bad, okay? If you're going to actually try to extend this, to take it so far is to say that this somehow shows that the arguments are on equal footing is 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 wrong. It's not right. And here's why, for a couple reasons, I think, okay? First of all, these kind of issues, flat earth versus young earth, are investigated by completely different kinds of science. Now, I invite you to go back into earlier episodes on this podcast feed. You can find where we have dealt with this subject before, of what constitutes science. Um, what is it that um, makes something science? What different kinds of sciences are there? You will find, as you're listening back to that, that an evolutionist first made the distinction in the concepts between evidential um, in the present, like observational science, and historical science. Observational versus a historical kind of science. Now, a lot of people harp on this, and they say, oh, the creationists made that up. It is not true. It is not true. It is not true. The evolutionists were the first to make this distinction. You um, there may be some similarities in concepts, but there are different ways for getting at historical science, science that deals with one-time events that happened in the past versus dealing with events that are ongoing and things that are before our eyes today that we can see and that we can test and make predictions and see outcomes and iterate, etc. These are different forms of science. They work differently. And we have to understand that these two things cannot be conflated. They cannot be made equal because they are investigated by a different kind of science. There are different things that flat earth people use that are different from what young earth people use. The arguments are different, okay? They're not the same kind of thing. They're completely different. And, um, I mean, kind of the most obvious way to see this is because Anything that flat earthers claim is always going to be something based in the present. They are arguments that are based on the present, okay? They are assertions. In some cases, I don't want to give them the, uh, uh, um, you know, I don't want to say that they're making arguments because they're not. They are asserting things like that there's a mass conspiracy among pilots that are, you know, um, not actually telling us how things go, you know, NASA, everybody involved in the, you know, moon landings, things like that, like every, all of these people are deceivers, okay, they are deceivers, and they, they point to real things that are happening in the real world that supposedly show that there is a flat earth right now that we live on, that this earth is not a globe, that's the kind of thing that they aim to do, okay, the young age creationist is not doing that. The young age creationist is saying, no, first of all, there are very good biblical reasons to think that this earth has a chronological significance to it in, in terms of when it was created and in terms of the events that happened on here. Um, and again, if you want to get a really in-depth look at at that, then you need to go back and listen to my interview with Dr. Stephen Lloyd where we discussed his paper called Chronological Creationism. The episode is titled Adam or Death, Which Came First? Go back and listen to that. It's very, very clear on this subject and it makes it very easy to understand. Okay, so then the young earth creationist is going from that. They're starting from that point and they are, they are taking events in biblical history and looking today at the science and saying, okay, can we explain the formation of the Grand Canyon in the framework of 
this past event? That can we explain um, anything that we do see in modern phenomena as being um, something that would not work under an evolutionary time scale, but would work under a creationist time scale? But again, these are arguments that are dealing with historical things, okay? They are not the same as a flat earth claim. Now, there are creationists, and let me just be very careful but very clear here. There are creationists who live on the fringe. Um, there are creationists who who have ideas that just frankly uh, are more of the nature of conspiracy than they are of the nature of science. I'm not talking about that stuff. I agree with you if on certain things there. Uh, if you are a person who thinks that that uh, there are fringe creationists, I do. I, I'm not going to name them. That's not my my job. Um, I do think there are fringe creationists. There are people who lie outside of the realm of reason when it comes to investigating these arguments and looking at these things. And I'm not talking about that stuff. I'm talking about people who have um, the same exact credentials and in many cases more experience as people who live on the other side, okay, from some of the same places. And again, I, I am not about the academic, the scholarship match. I mean, if you've read my stuff or listened to my stuff before, you know that. I mean, me, I'm a big autodidact. I don't have some sort of advanced high-level training. Uh, I just know how to think and I know how to read and I know how to have integrity in what I present and what I take in. And I, I think that one place that it can be beneficial to have that is to to show that we have credentialed scientists who are making their case for a young earth position that um, are credentialed in the way as many of their secular counterparts or even many of their Christian old age believing counterparts are. I mean, uh, even those guys will admit that you don't get much more credentialed and much smarter than Dr. Kurt Wise. He studied directly under Dr. Stephen Gould and was given awarded his PhD by Stephen Gould um, at Harvard. I mean, the, I mean, Stephen Gould was a, a, a harsh critic of creationism and yet felt that Wise did the work and was deserving of a PhD. I mean, it, and the guy has got radical integrity. I mean, people will admit this. So, Understand that these kinds of things are just different, okay? It's historical science versus observational science. It's two different kinds of things. Again, a concept that was placed by evolutionists there, a distinguishment that was made there between those two. And I think that that's where we fall on the line, that, that this can't even get off the ground, this parody idea, Um cannot even get off of the ground because of the differences in science. Okay, now the second thing, and these are all kind of related, but they just kind of attack it from a different angle. The second thing is conflating concepts, okay? Um, when somebody says that the flat earth is equal to the young earth idea, they're simply conflating concepts that should not be thought of as the same. And I know I'm a bit vague, so let me try to clarify this a little bit for you, okay? Okay. When somebody says that these things are on equal footing, okay, so the way that this was done, it was done by simply, as I mentioned, inserting the words young earth instead of anywhere that it said flat earth. And of course, minor adjustments needed to be made for context, but um, for the most part on these parody blogs, pretty much the exact wording of Faulkner was used to convey these things, okay? And what's going on here is that there are similarities between young earth and flat earth claims with respect to how they interact with the scholarship that disagrees. Let me say that one more time. There are similarities between young earth claims and flat earth claims with respect to the scholarship, with how they interact with the scholarship that disagrees, okay? So they go against the majority, for example. They make similar claims as to, um, as to the fact that folks have, that they have, that they have misread the Bible, um, 
So, for example, one of the things in there is that uh, what Faulkner writes is essentially that flat earth people have taken passages of scripture and twisted them to mean certain things and not understood them or had some kind of um, wooden uh, understanding of them. Well, you could easily substitute the words young earth in there, right, instead of flat earth, and it would have a rhetorical effect. But they're different concepts, so it's not necessarily the same thing. Just because you put the words there, um, for example, if you said, if, if, if I'm, not, I'm not using a, a direct quote, but this is the kind of thing I'm talking about. This is pretty much what was going on. So let's say Faulkner said something like this. Flat earth people take a wooden literal approach to scripture that leads them in the wrong direction. Okay, now this article I'm referring to would simply have it say something like young earth people have a wooden literalist, a wooden literalistic understanding of scripture that leads them in the wrong direction. So it might say something like that. Okay. And it sounds rhetorically effective, but since they are different concepts and they don't necessarily both take that way, again, I, how many times have I harped on this that we don't take a wooden literal approach to the Bible as creationists, that is a misunderstanding of creationism, then the conflation doesn't go through. So the rhetorical, see, this is the problem with this. The rhetorical effect is there for anybody who already agree, agrees with this writer and he can kind of laugh and they can have their, you know, their, their, uh, their cake and eat it too. And they can be all excited about this and they can, um, you know, share it across social media as this rhetorically powerful thing, but it's vacuous. It's vacuous because they're conflating concepts that do not work together. They're not the same thing. So they're different. So you have to watch out for that. That is another reason why young earth claims are not the same as flat earth claims. They, you could, um, you could insert some of these things in the same kind of sentences and it sound rhetorically good because of the relationship to the scholarship. Obviously, both of these ideas buck up against the consensus of scientists right now. Okay, so anything that makes it sound as though there has been some sort of misleading going on or something along those lines, when you put it in those contexts, is going to make it sound similar, even though the concepts are not the same. And the final thing, which really just flows uh, against this, is there is this assumption when you're looking at young earth claims versus flat earth claims, um, there is this assumption that the majority rules, but that is not how science is done. Okay, and, and again, let me just say, this is one of those things that um, is so deeply ingrained into the mind of, of many and many who are popularizers, um, excuse me, popularizers, that it's really hard to even say these things without sounding a little conspiratorial. But the fact of the matter is that in science, the majority does not rule. Things change in science all the time, and the reason that they change is often because one person had this harebrained idea and was not afraid to challenge the conventional idea. So, it's not as though the majority is a bad thing. I would say the majority of scientists also want to um, believe in gravity, okay? Um, I, I don't see that changing, right? Uh, so it's not as though um, the majority r ruling on something necessarily means it bad. it's bad. It just means that in most cases, the majority at least could be overturned with the discovery of something new. And if nobody is ever challenging that, then guess what? You're never going to have any discovery because that's what scientific inquiry and discovery is all about. And again, I can't help but say that we had a great conversation about this in my interview with Stephen Lloyd. We talked about science and we talked about um, th the way that most people misunderstand what science is meant to do. Science is investigative, okay? It is meant to go out and to investigate things about the world and to um, understand how the world works within a certain framework, within a certain paradigm, okay? And so this is one of those reasons why the young earth claims and the flat earth claims are being 
conflated together because there's this subtle idea living in the minds of many that the majority rules and the majority has ruled against both of those positions therefore they are on equal footing and again that is just false it's not only false that the majority doesn't rule by necessity but it's only but it's also false that these two claims kind of um, fall under the same categories as we have already discussed. So I hope that is at least a little bit helpful to you. If I could just summarize again why young earth claims are not equal to flat earth claims. Again, it's because one operates in the realm of historical science, the other, uh, and a little bit of observational, but mostly historical science, the other works in the realm of observational science, and one has been soundly, soundly, refuted by personal experience, by personal eyewitness testimony, by plenty of scientific experiments. Um, yeah, there's just no question on that. Okay, the second thing is that there are conflating concepts. And what I mean here is that these concepts each have a, a, a kind of similarity in the way that they react to, um, or the way that they relate to, the consensus scholarship. But that doesn't mean that they are on equal footing. The claims are different. And then finally, this idea that the majority rules is this um, sometimes subtle and sometimes not so subtle idea that really just needs to die, at least with respect to science, because that's not how science works. If you enjoy this episode, I'd love for you to leave a review. Um, those really help propel the uh, uh, the, the podcast in the iTunes library and in other, or I guess I should say the Apple podcast library and the other uh, podcast libraries that you can uh, find. And so we'd love for you to review this so that other people will find it helpful. Okay. So also you can go to steveschram.com and find lots of other resources there, different ways that we can help you interact with God's word and God's world and uh, become a more passionate servant of him. Thank you so much for listening. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.